this is nice. I guess we should uh, go and try it out. So the Sony A7 Mark IV is finally here. Well, I say finally here, but I've had it for the last couple of days. Um, been testing it, been setting it up, doing other things. I've got a bunch of videos planned all about the Sony A7 IV. So if you want to see all of that stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So I feel like there's been a lot of controversy about the Sony A7 IV. I feel like when the Sony A7 III came out a few years ago, that was like a big game changer. Like if you wanted a mirrorless camera, especially in the Sony world, the A7 III was like, the one to get. Obviously since the A7 III, we've had the A7R III, the A7R IV, we've had the A1, the A9, the A9 Mark II, the A7S III, the FX III, and a lot of cameras. I don't know whether it's me, but when the A7 IV came out, people just weren't happy about it. I don't really know why. Well, I kind of do know why, because I've obviously been on the internet. I don't live under a rock. But at the same time, we're all here to make our own opinions. And this is going to be my video making my opinion of what I think of the A7 IV and whether I will actually be going out and buying this camera. And the reason I say why I may buy it and not why I have bought it is because I haven't bought the camera yet. I've actually hired the camera from Hire a Camera. So just a massive thank you to Hire a Camera for being a great service provider, I guess. They haven't sent it me out free of charge, but because they actually sent it out to me a day early at no extra cost. And it's been a trouble-free service from the very beginning, so huge thank you to you guys. So for the most part, it's very similar to a Sony A7S III. I have a Sony A7S III. I've had it for probably around about nine months now, coming up to a year, and I love it. I use it every single day, and apart from maybe sometimes when I have to use the A7S III, especially when it comes to the weddings, I use the A7S III all the time, and I don't really have any problems with it, apart from the obvious 12 megapixel sensor, which I can't deny. As much as I may say 12 megapixel is enough, it's always nice to have more, isn't it? Like, like who isn't actually gonna say that? So who is the Sony A7 Mark IV actually made for? So Sony have three main lines of cameras. They have the A7R series, which is for resolution, so high megapixels, like 61 megapixels in the A7R4. And then you have the A7S line, similar to the A7S III, which is only 12 megapixel, but that's mainly pushed towards the video makers. And then the third line straight down the middle is where the A7 IV belongs, just the standard A7 line. And that's kind of a mixture of both the resolution part of it and also the sensitivity part. So they're both R and the S. Personally, I don't know massive amounts about the A7R line. It's never really been a camera I've been massively into. I've only ever had the A7 I and the A7 III. Then I moved to the A7S III. Now that the A7 IV's come out, it's much more regularly available. Then in all seriousness, I'm actually considering trading in my A7 III and upgrading to the A7 IV. And pretty much, this is why I'm hiring the camera right now. This whole experience which I'm sharing with you right now is literally me testing out the camera over the next few days to see whether it's suitable for me and then you can decide whether it's suitable for yourself. Don't you love that you've been at work all week? It's been absolutely red hot. I've been sat outside on the garden uh, with the new MacBook and it's just been absolutely boiling. In the evening, it's been sat there with beer, chilling, editing, making the YouTube videos. And then the one day I actually can come out to start filming and it's dull. It's not cold, it's just dull. It's like, well, it's like England. So a couple of days ago, I put a post up on Instagram and Twitter just to see whether anybody had any questions about the A7 IV and hopefully I can try and answer them in this video. So I'll be straight up. Uh, yes, I have had a problem with overheating. When I first got the camera, I got it out of the box. I tried it, made, obviously made sure it worked. And then later that day, I made the video of setting up and how I would set up a Sony A7 Mark IV or an A7S III in general. And whilst filming that video, remembering that the camera wasn't actually being used for any filming, any photo stuff, it was just turned on face down. It actually overheated, not once, not twice, but three times. And my first impressions weren't good, obviously. You don't want a camera which overheats, especially when you're hiring it to go and shoot a wedding and you actually want to maybe invest in this camera system. But then two things occurred to me. Firstly, the screen was actually closed and the heat sink for the Sony A7 IV or any of the Sony cameras is actually behind the screen. So ideally what you need to do is when the camera's in use, is open the screen up to allow the air to get out. And that's why Canon designed the EOS R5C to have the massive brick wall of fans behind the camera and between the screen so you don't have to do that all the time. 
Personally, I find that a massive inconvenience. It's like, why would you always want to have the screen out? It can easily get damaged, you can easily bend it back. I have almost done that once or twice on my A7S III. And regardless, I wasn't really using the camera to do anything which is very power heavy. I was literally just had it turned on face down on my desk. But the other thing I noticed when going through the settings is that there's actually a setting to change like the heat threshold to which the camera will turn down. A standard, when you get it, it's set to standard, but you can actually increase that to a higher temperature. Therefore, it takes longer for the camera to get really high. Therefore, it should actually take longer for the camera to shut down and need to cool down. So I did a test this morning to actually see how long it would last because obviously I'm filming a wedding. I need to make sure that it's gonna film for at least 30 minutes to 40 minutes. And I can confirm whilst filming at 422 10-bit 4K to both memory cards, having the screen open it recorded for a whole hour and 10 minutes and it didn't overheat the battery actually died and the cards were filled by that point Fifty to 60 frames a second in S and Q mode. It doesn't do 120 frames a second unless you are shooting in 1080p but why do you want to shoot in 1080p these days? Who knows? Well I've only used it for people and so far so good like it's tracking me pretty damn good. Pretty much no different to my A7S III. I haven't had any problems with focus breathing as of yet. I know people talk about the A7 IV having focus breathing problems, but I've actually had more problems with my A7S III having a problem with focus breathing um, whilst I've had it. So I just think you have to be careful and make sure you have the right focus setting mode for the environment you're in. Perhaps I'm wrong, like I'm no expert when it comes to any of this stuff, um, but there's no setting on the camera which is perfect for everything and um, there's just settings which you can recommend to other people um, to get them started but no matter what kind of environment i go to sometimes i have to change the settings to match the needs of what i need to shoot Honestly, after using both of the cameras, fair enough, I haven't used the a7 IV nowhere near as much as I've used the a7S III, but only you can actually decide which one would probably be best for you. But to answer the question of whether the a7 IV is actually better than the a7S III, I'm gonna be doing a video over the next couple of weeks, putting them up against each other head to head and giving you guys all the results to that. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for all the notifications to be notified when that video comes out. And one of the main questions I got is actually one of the biggest things that surprised me. It's the one thing that I didn't realize that I would enjoy quite as much as what I do. Yes, you only get 50 or 60 frames a second, but you also shoot in a crop mode, and there's no other alternative to that. The thing is, at first instance, you may think that's gonna really annoy you, but I've shot this whole video on the 16 to 35 f2.8. All the B-roll you saw was on the 16 to 35 2.8, and normally when I come out with the a7S III, I like to bring a second lens with me, whether it's the 50 mil, whether it's the 85 millimeter, just to allow me to get a different look. But because you have a crop in S and Q mode, you turn a 16 to 35 to be something like a 24 to 55 millimeter. Yeah, it's not exact. It doesn't give you the exact same look. You don't get the same compression as what you would from a standard 55 millimeter. But in terms of the crop and the actual framing, you get all of that just from the one single lens. So it means that you don't have to think about coming out with a second lens. You can just have one lens, come out, film all the stuff that you want for this kind of situation when you're wanting to film a YouTube video and you're done. So I just want to say a massive thank you for joining me for the video. If you want to see more content like this where I put it up against the A7S III, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you do, I'll see you right there. And thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.